gears here and talk about a 24-hour stretch that I think rivaled any 24-hour stretch in UFC matchmaking history. Friday, Saturday, UFC finalized Tony Ferguson against Donald Cerrone and then Nate Diaz versus Anthony Pettis. Not on the same card. First one is UFC 238, June 8th, Chicago. Awesome. They wanted to beat that up. They got it done. They got Ferguson back against Cerrone. The second one is, of course, on August 17th. That will be the co-main event to uh, Daniel Cormier. Review about Anthony Pettis versus Nate Diaz. Mm-hmm. Almost exactly three years to the day of the last Nate Diaz fight, which kind of blows my mind that it's been three years since UFC 202, right? I mean, it's just it's insane how fast time is flying. Um, but here's Diaz coming back. And the fight's at 170, so Pettis is staying at 170. Like, again, I'll go back to the point that I think this 24-hour stretch, just these two fights alone, I mean, they hit it out of the park. I love Ferguson Cerrone from a matchup standpoint. I I really feel like the winner of that fight could very much claim to be the number one contender. Um, And it's just a fun style matchup. It's just great. And the fact that it's happening so soon, like, you don't have to really wait for it. Awesome. And then this fight, which is a fight that actually has been brewing for quite some time, I don't know if you heard Pettis on my show Monday, but like I've never heard him speak like that before. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy. He's not a very colorful interview, so to speak. I know you've talked to him as well, but he's the kind of guy who doesn't mince words. And when you hear him say, I really don't like this guy, it's personal. I would have chosen Nate over Connor, who's obviously the biggest money fight out there. It really, it really hits home. Um, and it made me so much more excited for that fight. Like, I just love, like, just, I, I want to go to, I want to go to the press conference. I want to see them interact. I want to see the stare down. I miss Nate. I love covering Nate fights. I love watching. I can't say enough good things about this fight. Do you share my enthusiasm? 100% agree. I, I cannot wait for that fight because of, uh, the history between the two of them. Uh, I mean, I, I believe, I believe they got into it at a club one time. Did they not? The Diaz brothers and Anthony and Sergio. Did they? I don't remember that. When did they? I think, I, mean, I, think they got into, I think I believe they got into a skirmish at a club. I think TMZ might have had it because this was, this was a number of years ago. Um, but I but I think that might be where the the beef starts. I hope I'm not making that up, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that is the case. I believe it was after uh, UFC 202 is when that happened. Wow! Look oh, at Daniel see? coming yeah, in. Yeah, there you there. go. Daniel just jumping so, in there. So well, there I'm not is, the it, internet it, in front it, of me. It, so. <laughs> Nate was setting up his next fight right after uh, losing to Conor McGregor at UFC 202. So, so at, at the after party, they got into it, and uh, it actually goes back before that, I believe. But that's kind of where it came to to a boil, and now here we are. Uh, it, it's a fantastic fight. Uh, just seeing Nate Diaz back after three years. I mean, we've been waiting for this. We got uh, a big tease last year when he was supposed to fight Dustin Poirier at Madison Square Garden in November, and and now it seems like he's back. He, he's got a new contract with the UFC seems to be happy with uh, the opponent and, and the timing, and, and he's wanted to come back. He's wanted to come back. It was really just a matter of coming to an agreement, and, and here we are. And, uh, and Pettis at 170, coming up with the, the Wonder Boy knockout, perfect time. I mean, you cannot, uh, if they were going to do Diaz versus Pettis, this is the perfect time for it. And I know a lot of fans are sort of rolling their eyes, oh, here we go, Diaz, we've been teased about Nick, we've been teased about Nate over the past three years, the whole thing with Poirier didn't pan out. This feels, even though we've you know, we saw Poirier and, and Diaz square off at that press conference in L.A. Uh, back in August of last year before the uh, Cejudo DJ fight. Even though we saw that and we have yet to see these two square off at a press conference, this feels a lot more real. Like hearing Pettis talk the way in which he did about Diaz, knowing how Diaz feels about Pettis as well, knowing how much um, he's itching to come back. I know he's just... He's just really excited to get back. I don't want to use the word excited. The Diaz brothers hate the word excited, but he is very much looking forward to getting into a training camp, getting on a regiment, getting a schedule for, you know, an upcoming fight on his books, so to speak. Uh, this feels very real. Like I don't, this is not other than an injury happening, of course, which could very well happen. We know that this is a fight that is going to happen. And I don't think any fan, I saw a lot of people say, Oh, BS, this is not going to happen. Shenanigans. No, this is an actual real fight that is going to happen. I'm going to ask you one more thing before I, I let you go and we wrap this bad boy up. Uh, you were another great sport. What happened with UFC Minneapolis, Harrington? Uh, well, it was supposed to be Robbie Lawler versus Tyron Woodley. Oh, Tyron had a pull out. That's right. Hand injury or something? Yes, sir. Uh, he said it was the same hand injury that he uh, caught while he was in the Darren Till fight. Uh, something wrong with uh, uh, a tendon in his hand. It's what he had surgery for that kept him out of the Colby fight uh, in November. Uh, and eventually, yeah, uh, so it just flared up again in training. All right, we fight. got it. All right. 
It's a lot. You Jesus, how nervous to give us your life story, why don't you? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> just the fact, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. it was a cold winter morning, 2016. Tyron Woodley had been training too hard. Just want to paint a picture. Um, it, it, it was a cold day. No, no, no. Um, yeah, this pan problem has been bothering Tyron for a while. I remember... I think it was International Fight Week. Uh, I think it was when DC fought Stipe Miocic, if I'm not mistaken. And I think he'd beaten Darren Till. And the UFC wanted him to fight Colby Covington. And his hand was giving him problems. And the UFC, and I, I, I won't say the amount of money because it's not my business. It's not my place to. But the UFC offered him a very, very handsome purse. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And I, I my advice was to actually take the fight. I said, Tyron, you know, it doesn't last forever. Um, you know, I mean, that's a lot of money. And, you know, I reckon you can still win the fight anyway. He said, no, I can't use my hand properly. And, and I respect that. You know, he, he was he wanted to hang on to his belt and he didn't want to go in as a lesser version of himself. And he turned down a very, very generous offer from the UFC because his hand wasn't correct. Uh, and he had the surgery. As we know, he fought, he fought Usman. Lost the fight, unfortunately. Usman's now the champ. Congrats. Uh, and now he's supposed to fight Robbie Lawler. And then here we are again. So uh, it's a shame for Tyron because obviously having your hands in good working order is essential as a mixed martial artist. And this seems to be a recurring problem. So that's a shame. One thing I did find kind of interesting, though, is that a lot of people came out the woodwork to offer to replace Tyron. Darren Till offered, Leon Edwards offered, I think there was a couple of others, and Robbie Lawler has turned them all down, and he the, the entire fight now has been withdrawn from the card, which is interesting because, obviously, uh, you know, remember what Woodley did to Robbie Lawler in the first fight, you know. You want that uh, fight with Robbie Lawler, you you want the, the last champion, you beat you beat Woodley, get the, you, you get to... You get to uh, get the the revenge because you have that loss in your record now, right? Um, and then you beat Tyron Woodley. You're right there for a title shot. Simple as that. Simple as that, dude. Doesn't matter. You beat Tyron Woodley. You're right in talk. Somebody gets injured. You're the fucking dude. So I understand why Robbie Lawler doesn't want to fight Mike Perry or fucking whoever else you know jumped up and, and offered the fight. I mean, there, look, I think uh, there was a couple big fights there and the potential for some big fights. But yeah, dude, short notice fight. Why not just put it off? You can, you know, if you're Robbie Lawler, you're doing more than fine. You can put it off and make that fight happen at a later date. And I'm assuming that's what he wants to happen. Or flip side, he dodged a bullet. He didn't have to take out the number one contender or the guy to have the championship belt for a long, long time. The guy that knocked him out in one punch early in the first round, you know, and he gets to fight someone else like a Darren or Leon Edwards. And who knows, maybe he wins that fight. And oh, oh, lo and behold, he's fighting for the belt again. You know, that's the way it is in the UFC. You know, you can't sit around and wait for things. I mean, Dana White says it all the time. The show moves on. You know, the ball keeps rolling. You know, the show must progress. They, they, they keep putting on fights you know champions need challenges and if you're in the right time at the right place at the right moment you get your shot you know now who knows maybe that, that is the right plan maybe it isn't I guess I was always of the um, the mindset well fuck it I'll fight someone else then but you know may, maybe you're right maybe it's a personal thing and he wants to fight Tyron Woodley because he, he wants to redeem that loss and give a better account of himself and I get that I understand that and I respect that but um, I kind of wanted him to see I wanted to see Robbie Lola fight someone else, you know? Yeah. yeah. So well, I was a little disappointed. Would... Not in him, just as a fan. Yeah, he would have also been interested in the Ben Askren rematch as well, which, you know, you get you get a couple losses. You want to get those wins back. Um, how important is that as a fighter? I mean, you, you got to get the revenge loss with Dan Henderson, but that was very specifically a personal loss. It was the worst loss of your career. It was something that, you know, um, you know, what happened to come to fruition uh, any of those other losses that you've had in your career was that it didn't seem for, for and you can answer this better than, than I can answer for you, but it didn't seem like you were super motivated to go back and redo those fights, even if you had lost close fights. No, I, as a fighter, you always want the opportunity to go back and redo the ones that you lost. Definitely. We mentioned rematches and, uh, yeah, I, mean, I had the Rockhold rematch. I had three rematches in my life. Once against Mark Epstein, uh, in cage rage, I won the belt. And then uh, I rematched him and he, you know, I beat him again. Then Rockhold and Dan Henderson. But yeah, the Dan Henderson one I had to do again. For, I mean, I wanted the Rockhold one as well, but who else did I lose to? 
I mean, Vandalay Silva. I mean, I wasn't too arse about Chale. that one. I thought that was a robbery anyway. Chael, that was a robbery. Uh, I thought I won that fight. Rashad, Chael thought so. You were going to do that. Rashad Evans, well. that was close, and that was a close one. You know, if they're close like that, and the, the judges give it a different way, you're not too bothered. But if you get finished, then you're like, shit. You know, I really think I could do better. And, and it does kind of eat away at you as a fighter. I, I tell you what, though. Do you know what? I, I did see this. And sorry, we didn't mean to talk about this. But I saw, I don't know when it was, maybe a few days ago. And, you know, everybody. Uh, and, you know, I have some friends that are transgender. You know, everyone do you. and that, that I'm more than happy for that. But a bill passed allowing female, well, sorry, pardon me, transgender women. Obviously, they used to be men or, or boys. They're now allowed to compete in girls' sports at school and, and after school and colleges and all that type of stuff, which, you know, I, I think is a little ridiculous if I'm honest. Imagine if you're a woman that is dedicated or, or, or a young girl your entire life to being the best, making sacrifices, training, all the rest of it, and then fucking Jack with a frock on comes in with a bit of lipstick and just smashes you. Because, yeah. listen, for all the equality aside, you can't deny that men are bigger and stronger that's just that's just fact okay that's not open for debate men have, have more muscle we're bigger people we're stronger so therefore our athletic ability is better uh, and and I, I read that on twitter i think it was a story on twitter and i was like wow now listen you know you do you whatever makes you happy god bless you and all the best you know but i mean look at fallon fox you know the rest are competing against girls it, it's it's not right and i know we didn't mean to talk about this but, uh, and, and and there we went well, yeah, I mean, look, you know, it really it begs to, uh, you know, answer the question, how much do you really want it? You know? If you have not already, hit that subscribe button with its notification bell and leave a comment in the comment box below of what you thought of the video and tune in for more on MMA News Outlet.